Okay, this is uh, 4.5. <coughs> it's all about asymptotes or graphs. Um, the quiz obviously is not enough for this one. I pass you need to do the course revision. But anyway, which of the following is true about the function f given by y is equal to f of x eight? Okay. Always, always when working with asymptotes, there's three things you need to check for. Okay. The first thing you always check for is oblique asymptotes. Okay. The only time you're ever gonna have oblique asymptotes is when degree of p is greater than degree of q. Uh, or no, no, no. Sorry, 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 sorry. Let me rephrase it in a better way. Let's say you have p p uh, p of x over q of x okay uh, where the degree of p is equal to degree of q plus one okay uh this is this is when you'd have an oblique asymptote less than here the degree of p is less than the degree of q so you will not have an oblique asymptote so in this case no oblique asymptote then the second thing you check for is horizontal asymptote how do you do that you you plug x you take x as infinity so if you take x as infinity you're going to have eight times infinity over you always check the highest power huh you don't care about the 64 you don't care about any other x you always take the highest power over infinity squared infinity cancels with infinity squared and a number divided by infinity gets you zero so it means y equals zero is my horizontal asymptote the third thing you check for is your vertical asymptote okay the vertical asymptote is when your denominator is equal to zero so x squared minus 64 is equal to zero so you're going to get x is equal to plus minus 8 so x is equal to 8 and x equals minus 8 are both uh, vertical asymptotes okay uh, here okay <coughs> uh, yeah you guys remember from the rules I gave you for the horizontal asymptotes uh, for p of x over q of x if uh, degree of p or, you know, let me, I'm not going to say degree because it's too much writing. Let's say you have, I don't know, x to the n plus a uh, plus, I don't know, bx to the power of n minus 1 plus la 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 la. Okay, and then here you have x to the m plus bx to the power of m minus 1 plus la 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 la. Okay, you guys know when you compare the infinities and horizontal asymptotes or whatever, you always take the highest power from both up and down. So, horizontal asymptotes and the three cases. I will see where n is equal to m then the horizontal asymptote is equal to uh let's call this ax and this is uh i don't know it's called z i don't know the horizontal asymptote is equal to a over z okay uh, if n is greater than m then there is no horizontal asymptote and if n is less than m then y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote Okay, so Masan, for the first one here, let's say you had 3x cubed over 4x cubed. The horizontal asymptote here, uh, plus 4x. Uh, the horizontal asymptote here would be y is equal to 3 over 4. Because since you have the same power, your horizontal asymptote will just be 3 over 4. Okay, you can memorize these rules. A lot of people I saw, I didn't think people would memorize the rules, but a lot of people memorize them for the CA and uh, they, they got them correct. So you can use these rules, it's uh, completely fine. Question two, uh, consider the function given by this. Uh, as x approaches infinity, what happens? Okay, let's see. Always, always, whenever you have a function, can you you're gonna need this for graphing if it comes in your written, which I doubt. But like, they sent many emails about uh, getting pencil and stuff, so I would assume uh, that you guys would get uh, any. You, sorry, you guys would get um, uh, graphing in your written. So for graphing, you'd always need to look at the behavior of the graph. Because in Temesan, you would be graphing, like, let's say you're graphing, I don't know, x cubed minus 2. Uh, you would be graphing uh, this. Okay? So in you need to know, as I approach positive infinity, am I going back down? Or am I going... Am I going all the way up? That's why we, we check as x approaches positive infinity, as, as x approaches negative infinity, what happens? Okay? So that's the purpose of this behavior. That's why we study behavior. So when we graph, we know what we're doing. Anytime you want to study behavior, you always look at the highest power term. The highest power is 3, so you don't look at 4x squared, you look at minus 3x cubed. As x approaches positive infinity. What does y approach? Let's see. y approaches what? Minus 3 times infinity cubed. What do you get? You get, infi you get negative infinity. Because negative infinity. And that means y approaches 
negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches what? y will approach negative 3 times negative infinity cube. Uh, you're going to get, uh, by the way, cube, when you have an odd power, you know it stays negative, right? So negative times negative, that means y approaches positive infinity. Okay? So these are our, our uh, let's say, behaviors. So as x approaches positive infinity, y decreases without bounds. So decreases without bounds as x approaches positive infinity. When we say decreases without bounds, basically we're saying without bounds basically means infinity. So when we say decreases, any negative, without bounds means infinity. Okay? That's the first one. With the second one, we said as x approaches negative infinity, what happens? It's approaching positive infinity. So it's increasing without bounds. Okay? So these are my two correct answers. And then three, consider the curve that represents the function. This is the function. Uh, y equals f of x equals x minus 2 squared. Okay. And then he gave you the derivative. Okay. I guess that makes sense. Uh, when is... Ah, uh, okay. Okay, yeah, makes sense. They want to tell you, they want to see when is it increasing and when is it decreasing. Okay. Here's the rule in math. Because you need all five steps, by the way, for graphing. And I'm going to solve in course division. I'll show you how to graph. There's five steps you need to solve uh, for that. I'll do that later. A function is increasing for when y prime is greater than zero. And the function is decreasing for y prime less than zero. y prime represents the slope of the graph. Okay? If the slope of the graph is positive, you are a we're increasing. If the slope of the graph is less than zero, so if it's negative, I mean, maneta, the graph is going down, decreasing. So we need to know when is it increasing for x what, and uh, when is it decreasing. Okay, so they gave us uh, these blanks. You have to figure it out. A kid, we have to know when it is. So a kid, actually, you're gonna ask the how do I know if I put increasing first or decreasing first? So you're going to see here, over here, you have a boundary. Let's solve it first, and let's see. When is it increasing? When is f prime of x greater than 0? Okay, f prime of x greater than 0. What is f prime of x? 3x minus 2, x plus 6, greater than 0. Imagine this was uh, an equation, okay? Let's see here. If you guys remember, if you remember, how do you check, this is a quadratic, by the way. Uh, many people have so many different ways of solving this, and I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use it the the fact that it's a quadratic. If you guys remember, when you have a quadratic, quadratic means you have two x terms. Huh? If you have a quadratic, you know that between the roots, it's opposite to the sine of a, and before and after the roots is the same sine as a. So we'll put negative infinity here, positive infinity here. This is the table of uh, we call this table of variation. Okay. Negative infinity. What are my roots here? I have 2 and negative 6, right? So negative 6 and 2. We know at those points, it equals 0. Because it's at the roots, it's equal to 0. In between the roots, it's what? A, in this case, is what? Positive, right? Because 3 is positive, And all of these, they're in the order of x minus a. You guys know if you see it as a minus x when x is the second term, that means the quadratic is negative. But we don't see that here. It's always x minus x minus. So that means it's a positive quadratic. So in between the roots, it's negative. Okay? Before and after the roots, always it will be positive. So you can use this to know the sign of y prime or f, f, f prime of x. You can use this or you can do this. And this way I like it better. Okay, this is the one I'm going to do now. When, again, table of sign. And this is what I do. Table of sign, right? Negative infinity, positive infinity. You're always going to use this table of variation. Always. Negative infinity, positive infinity, list your zeros, whatever. Let's say it wasn't a quadratic. You know, sometimes there's a lot of x's. Uh, and I, I don't know it's a quadratic. I'm just solving, okay? Here's what you do. What are my zeros in this case? My zeros are 2 and negative 6. You always find your zeros. Negative 6 and 2. Okay? Always. So, 0, 0. Let's say and I don't know it's a quadratic. I don't know between, whatever. This is what you do. Take a point before negative 6. Okay? Take a point before negative 6. Let's say negative 7. Okay, let's forget about this 3. I don't care about this 3. You're going to get a, a negative 7, right? Take negative 7. Negative 7 minus 2. And then here you're going to have negative 7 plus 6. Let's see. Negative 7 minus 2 is a negative number. Right? Negative 7 plus 6 is also a negative number. And you guys know negative negative gets you what? Positive. So that means before it's positive. 
طب let's say now between minus six and two. In my opinion, the easiest thing to take between minus six and two is zero. Let's take zero. Zero. You're gonna get zero minus two. Zero plus six. Zero minus two is negative. Zero plus six is positive. Negative positive gets you what? Negative. طيب. After two, let's take I don't know four. Four minus two. Four plus six. So you're gonna get positive. Positive. Which will get you what? Positive. So now you just figured out your signs for every uh, for the whole equation so now we want to know when is it increasing when is it decreasing so enter in your written if you get this you're gonna list your zeros you're gonna do what i just did now okay all this work we don't really care about it's this thing that we really care about here okay so you're gonna write like this uh f of x is increasing for what when is it increasing it's increasing for when it's positive when is it positive Everything to the left of negative 6. So everything to the left of negative 6, right? So anything less than negative 6. And anything to the right of 2. So anything to the right of 2. So anything bigger than 2. And when is it decreasing? It's for when it's negative. When is it negative? It's negative in between negative 6 and 2. So you write like this. In between 2 and minus 6. Okay? So over here. How do I know where do I put increase, where do I put decreasing? Since here, we know that it, they said like in between something and something, that means obviously, which one here is, is in between? It's this one. So that means the second blank here would be decreasing. Uh, let me just erase it. The second blank here would be decreasing, and then you just fill in negative 6 and 2. And then over here, obviously, it will be increasing. When is it increasing for anything less than what? Negative 6. And greater than what? 2. And then, when does it have a local maximum? Uh, whatever. Okay, and local minimum. Guys, you know for the stationary points, you just equate it to zero. Okay, and by the way, we don't even need to do anything else. We already have our table of variations, so we already know which ones, which ones, which was a maximum, which ones a minimum. Over here, we have our zeros. We found them as negative six and two. So, okay, we have our zeros. We know that it was going up. It was positive, so it was increasing. Then became negative. So what's negative six? Negative six is a maximum, right? So its maximum is negative six. How about two? It was decreasing, negative, then positive, increasing, right? So, it ne in decreasing, then increased. What is this? It's a local minimum. So, its minimum is at x equals 2. Then they ask for what is the value there. Guys, please don't put 0, 0. We're talking about the original graph. What's the value uh, at negative 6? Because you need to, later on when you're graphing, you need to draw it as a point, the local maximum and the local minimum. You need to draw it as a point. How are you going to draw a point if you don't know its y-coordinate? So, what's the y-coordinate at negative 6? You substitute negative 6 minus 2 squared. Uh, times negative 6 plus 10 so you get uh, this is uh, 64 64 times 4 yeah you get 64 times 4 which is 256 and then how about for 2 2 minus 2 zero. yeah you get 0 of course you get 0 because if you substitute 2 you're going to get uh, 0 over here okay okay so very easy uh just to recap what I did, because I feel like sometimes you guys get lost when I write when I write these things. I'm, I'm, what's this guy saying? Just remember, a function is increasing and decreasing depending on its derivative. Okay, it depends on its derivative. If its derivative is positive, then the function is increasing. If its derivative is negative, then the function is decreasing. Remember it like that. Okay. How do I know what's the sign of my derivative? Okay, how do I know if my derivative is positive or negative? You need to use table of variation. Always, for a table of variation, to construct a table of variation, you always list your zeros. This is my this is my derivative over here. List your zeros. And then try a point before. If I tried a point before, I get a positive answer. That means it's positive before negative 6. Then try a point uh, after negative 6, like 0. So we tried it, and we got a, uh, we got a negative answer. So that means it's it's a negative in after negative six. So it reaches two. Now after two, try up another number and you get a positive answer. So that means it's positive, negative, positive. So now we know the intervals for where it's positive. So it's positive for everything to the left of negative six, as well as everything to the right of two. And when is it negative? It's negative in between negative six and two. So that's how you know when it's positive. That means it's increasing. When it's negative, that means it's decreasing. Okay. I, I hope and you understood question four because really I'm, I'm just the simplest way for me to explain I can't nothing I can't explain it in any other way uh, okay <coughs> consider this is I think I'm on question four yeah question four question four okay consider this they want to find asymptotes always always 
a function can never have a horizontal asymptote and an oblique asymptote at the same time. Okay, why? Because if you remember our rules, when you have x to the n over x to the m, if n is greater than m, then there's no horizontal asymptote. And the only time you'd have an oblique asymptote if n is equal to m plus 1, if n is bigger than m by 1. Okay? So the only time you'd have oblique is if, there are, if n is bigger than m. So you can't have two at the same time. So here's what you do. Anytime you have an asymptote question, you look at your powers. Okay? Look at your powers. Here, the one up is bigger than the one down. So obviously, there's no horizontal asymptote. But okay, they're bigger, so you have to check if there's an oblique asymptote. Is the one up bigger than the one down by one? Yes, two is equal to the one down plus one, right? Two is equal, this is power one. Two is equal to one plus one, right? So that means there is an oblique asymptote. Let's start by finding the oblique asymptote, okay? The oblique asymptote is always found by dividing the one up by the one down. How do I divide polynomials, guys? You can do long division or you can do synthetic division. Always oblique asymptote. It's equal to the whole uh, p of x, the whole numerator divided by the whole denominator. And then you ignore the you ignore the remainder. Okay. So let's see. P of x divided by q of x. X squared plus x minus two divided by x minus two. How do I divide it? Listen. People use long division. I always on this channel. I always always heavily supported synthetic division. I always support it. How do you do synthetic division? The thing you're dividing by. What's the root? X minus two. What's the root of it? Two. So Remember when we use synthetic division, if you're dividing by x minus b, then you put in here, you put b, okay? You just equate, you find the root. What's the root of x minus 2? It's 2. Okay, so you put 2, and then you list your coefficients. 1, 1, minus 2. It's not 1, 1, minus 2. How do you divide? I'm sure all of you, um, many of you remember. You drag this one down, you get 1. 1 times 2 is 2. One, then you add 1 plus 2, 3. 3 times 2, 6. Minus 2 plus 6, 4. So then you get this. Always, we had a degree 2 function, right? Since you divide it now, how, what's the degree now going to be? 1. So you're only going to have 1x. So the first one is going to be x. So the second one won't be x. It will just be a normal number. And the last one is always your remainder. We ignore the remainder. So 1x plus 3 is the same as saying x plus 3. So your oblique asymptote is equal to x plus 3. That's how you do it. Okay, x plus 3 is an oblique asymptote. What's your vertical asymptote? Your vertical asymptote is when your denominator equals 0 x minus 2 is equal to 0, so x equals 2 is the vertical asymptote, okay? Okay, question uh, 5. <coughs> How many? Oh, 17. <laughs> okay, this one is saying something is an oblique asymptote. Obviously, it's an oblique asymptote because the degree of the one up is bigger than the degree of the one down by 1. How do you find the oblique asymptote? Again, you have to divide the numerator by the denominator using long division, using whatever you want. Okay, and I use synthetic division because it helps me. It's way faster, in my opinion. <coughs> to divide by synthetic division, you list your root. What's the root of x minus 3? 3. So you put 3 on the side, and then you list your coefficients. 2 minus 2 minus 6. 2 minus 2 minus 6. Is there anything for me to add 2 by? No. So you just drag it down. It goes down. Cross, multiply. 6. Now you add minus 2 and 6. 4. Cross, multiply. You can get 12. Minus 6 plus 12, 6. We never care about the remainder. The last one we don't care about is an oblique asymptote. What am I left with? It was degree 2. So what is it now? Degree 1. So that means I only have 1x. So it's going to be 2x. The first one will be x. And then after that, because it decreases, right? So if it was power 1, then here it will be power 0. And you guys know power 0. There's no x in. So it's going to be 2x plus 4 remainder 6. We don't care about the remainder. So this 2x plus 4 is what I care about. So that's my oblique asymptote. Okay. Okay, question six. Uh, what's the x-intercept? By the way, Anna, I'm realizing that all of these questions, they're basically building you up uh, so that you understand how to graph because you need every single step we're solving in this quiz just for one question to graph. Find the x-intercept. The x-intercept always is when y is equal to zero. Okay? So you just equate this to zero. 18 minus 2x over 6x plus 1 equal to zero. Okay. I'm going to teach you something about the behavior of functions, okay? When a fraction equals to zero, there's only one thing that means. It means that the numerator is equal to zero. Here's why. If the denominator was equal to zero, would the function be equal to zero? No, it would be equal to infinity because you're not, it would be undefined, right? Because you're not allowed to divide by zero. The only way a fraction can be equal to zero is if the numerator is equal to zero. 
Okay, let's say here you are actually trying to solve this, okay? You would cross multiply, right? So you'd get 18 minus 2x is equal to 0. So what does that mean when any fraction is equal to 0? SubhanAllah, the denominator, it went poof, it vanished, right? So you're left with the numerator is equal to 0, okay? So take it as a rule. 18 minus 2x over 6x plus 1. Fraction equals 0, that means your numerator is equal to 0. Okay, so 18 minus 2x is equal to 0, so that means x is equal to 9. Okay, x equals 9. That means, yeah, yeah, that means your, your x intercept is 9, comma 0. For those of you who don't know what an x intercept is, somehow in grade 11, you don't know what the x intercept is. Uh, let's say I have this graph over here. Your x intercepts are these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are 5 x intercepts in one graph. This is what I graphed here. I actually don't know what I graphed here, but it's like, whatever. This is an x-intercept, and this is over here, the y-intercept. You can only have one, one y-intercept in a function. You can never have two y-intercepts, because a function cannot have two values in the range for one value in the domain. Never. Okay? So here you have, these are what we call x-intercepts. Okay? x-intercept is when it crosses the x-axis. Okay? And you guys know when you cross the x-axis, what's the value of y? Okay, this is equal to zero. Okay? Always, always, always. So you find your x value at that point. So x equals 9. And obviously, the y value will always be 0 because it's an x intercept. Okay? Question 7. Okay, find the vertical asymptote. Okay. Vertical asymptote, you equate your denominator to 0. x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. And I like to factor. You guys can use quadratic formula. I'll factor as here. Two, no two numbers that multiply to get 2, but add up to get 3. In a 2 and 1. Because 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay, then you check the sign since it's plus, that means they both have to be the same. So since it's minus in the middle, that means they're both minus minus. So I'm going to get x is equal to 2, equals 0. x is equal to 2 and x equals 1 are vertical asymptotes. Uh, question 8. The function y equals f of x of 3x over x squared minus 1, the horizontal asymptote. How do you find the horizontal asymptote? Always... You memorize your rules if you want. If you want, you know, memorize. Oh, power up is less than the power down. So, so uh, y equals zero. Oh my god. But and I don't like. I hate solving with the rules for horizontal asymptotes. I uh, actually plug x as infinity. Three times infinity over infinity squared. Because you only take the highest power. I don't care about this minus one. Infinity cancels with one infinity. So you're going to be left with three over infinity. And you guys know, any number divided by infinity is always, is always equal to zero. Some of you, like, and I don't like just uh, telling you to memorize stuff. Uh, but the reason for this, by the way, any number x over infinity is equal to zero. The reason for this is because, let's say you have a number. And you're dividing by infinity. Infinity is an extremely, extremely, extremely large number. Let's say you're, you're, divide, let, let's say you're dividing a number by an extremely large number. You're going to get a very, 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 very small number. And in math, whenever we have a very, very, very small number, we just call it zero. We don't bother saying 0 0.0000000000000. No, we just say zero. Okay? We don't go like that. Okay. <clears throat> so for that reason, here, y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. Because it, uh, you're going to be left with 3 over infinity, which is equal to zero. So then y is equal to zero. Okay? Question 9. Okay. <coughs> here... We're studying uh, the behavior. Uh, we have, they're asking us what happens as x approaches minus infinity as x approaches positive infinity. Basically, when you're, again, when you're comparing, uh, when you're like studying the behavior, you always take the highest power. We're going to do what we just did for horizontal asymptote because technically into when you're studying as x approaches negative infinity as, as x approaches positive infinity for, a, for like a fraction, you're basically looking at the horizontal asymptote. So let's see here. We're going to look at this one here and this one here. So 5 times, let's start with negative, uh, positive infinity to the power of 5 over uh, positive infinity to the power of 4. Obviously, the 5 cancels with the power 4. So you'll just be left with 5 times positive infinity. And what is that? It's just positive infinity. So as x approaches positive infinity, then y approaches positive infinity. And here they called y as f of x. Okay, so f of x approaches positive infinity. So this will be correct. How about uh, if it was negative infinity? 
If it was negative infinity, you're going to have 5 times negative infinity to the power of 5 over negative infinity to the power of 4. Okay, negative infinity to the power of 5 is just negative infinity to the power of 5. Negative infinity to the power of 4 is positive infinity to the power of 4. Here's where students get mixed up. They forget that when you have an even power, it becomes positive. So what do they say? They say, oh, negative, negative? Yani, psirha, yalla. Y approaches positive infinity. They write this because they see negative, negative. That's not how it works, bro. If it's under a positive as the under an even power, it becomes positive. Hala, you have, you have negative, right? We don't care about the 5. We, we don't care, bro. Okay, you have the 5 with the 4, okay? Yeah, if you cancel out infinities, you're going to be left with negative infinity up. Okay? Uh, so y approaches negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching negative infinity. But for those who don't know why I am just cancelling, hey, if you have x to the power 5 over x to the power 4, what are you left with? Subtract powers, you're going to get x to the power 1, right? So this will also be correct over here. Okay, for this one, question 10. Uh, again, they're telling us to study the behavior as x approaches infinity. Uh, in other words, by the way, when we say as x approaches infinity for a, ra for a rational uh, function, rational function, any yani fraction, uh, for a rational function, um, you're basically finding the horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so let's see here. As uh, x approaches uh, positive infinity, what happens? We have 6 times positive infinity to the power of 4 over positive infinity to the power of 4. What's going to happen? Positive infinity to the power of 4. Positive infinity to the power of 4 cancels. So you're going to be left with 6. So that means as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches 6. So how about negative infinity? Again, same thing. 6 times negative infinity to the power of 4. Ala, negative uh, infinity to the power of 4. Cancel, cancel. You're going to be left with 6. So come in as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 6. This is where the rule that if you have the same power up and down as the highest power, then the asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, will just be equal to the coefficient of the one up divided by the coefficient of the one down. So you're going to have here, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches 6, and the same thing for when it approaches negative infinity, it also approaches 6. Question 11. Uh, again, function, and they're asking us to study the behavior as x approaches infinity. Here, you're going to have 3 times infinity. Where, let's say, sorry, sorry, sorry. I have to write. I actually have to write. As x approaches positive, as x approaches negative. As x approaches positive infinity, what happens? Let's see. 3 times positive infinity over uh, positive infinity to the power of 5. Positive infinity cancels uh, with the one here. It becomes infinity to the power of 4. So, so you're going to get 3 over infinity to the power of 4. Any number divided by infinity gets you what? 0. So that means as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches 0. Same thing for negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity. You get 3 times negative infinity over a negative infinity to the power of 5. Again, here you have power 1, here you have power 5. You can cancel this and this becomes 4. 3 over negative, uh, th negative infinity to the power of 4 is what? It's going to be a positive infinity, uh, which is 0. And by the way, even if you got negative infinity in the denominator, as long as you have a number being divided by an infinity, whether it's positive or negative, you're still going to get 0. Okay? So, if, this is where the rule came, that if the power up is less than the power down, then y will always approach 0. So the horizontal asymptote is 0. Okay? So as x, x approaches positive or negative uh, infinity, y would approach 0. Question 12. Oh. Oh. So this one, it took me a few seconds to understand you know, what is happening. Okay, 6. You can approach 6 from 5 and you can approach 6 from uh, 7, if that makes sense. You can approach 6 by going towards 6 in the sense of 5.999999. That's approaching 6, right? Or you can approach 6 from the decreasing side, as in 6.00000000. Say 1. So here, this is very close to 6, and this is also very close to 6. So, just so you can understand, 
for vertical asymptotes, as you as you approach here, as x approaches six, six here is the vertical asymptote, by the way. And uh, when x approaches a certain number, that means you're talking about the vertical asymptote. Well, how do you know it's vertical asymptote? Just equate your denominator to zero. You're gonna get x equals six. Always, when x approaches your vertical asymptote, not always actually. When x approaches your vertical asymptote, for this case, when you have something minus something. Yeah, so for the case for when you have something minus something, you have to check it. So, for example, we can approach it from the sense of 5.99, or we can approach it from the sense of 6.01. Let's, let's take x as both of them, okay? Substitute x as both. Let's say 5.9999 minus 6. It would be a negative answer, right? So, for that reason, y will approach what? Negative uh, infinity. And here, if you approached it from the side of more than 6, if you subtract by 6 here, like if you substitute x as that value, you're going to get a positive value, and for that case, y will be approaching positive infinity. That's just why it will approach both positive and negative infinity. Okay, you have to check this in the exam. Like some graphs, like y equals 1 over uh, 2x plus 1, or 2x minus 1. Uh, in this case, yeah, so in this case, also over here, the horizontal asymptote will be 1 over 2. If you were to approach it from before 1 over 2, like, I don't know, let's say 1 over 4, that's before 1 over 2, and you substitute, you would get a negative answer. So for that reason, it will approach a negative infinity, and if you approach it from after 1 over 2, like, for example, 3 over 4 times 2 minus 1, you would get uh, uh, 6 over 1, over 0. you would get a positive answer. So for that reason, it will approach positive infinity. So usually, vertical asymptotes, as x approaches the, the value of the vertical asymptote, uh, as x approaches the value of the uh, vertical asymptote, you will always have y or f of x approaching positive and negative infinity, okay? For most of the time, okay? Like other cases, uh, y is equal to 1 over x, okay? For this case, no, hatta even for this case, even for this, this case, it's, they're all correct. The only exception to the case I just said now, I, I went on Desmos and I, I, um, I started looking at graphs. Uh, basically, this is the only graph when you have the degree of the denominator bigger than the degree of the one. You, guys, I know, you know what? I'm yapa. Wallah, I'm telling you this, and it's not going to come in the exam. But uh, <laughs> if the degree down is bigger than the one, uh, if sorry, if it's 1 over x squared, if like it's x squared down and there's up, there's no x, that's the only time you won't have. Uh, it's... The only exception to that was when I told you the one down is bigger than the one up by 2. But why is that not happening here? It's because you have this minus 6 over here. So that changes everything. It really changes everything. Okay, so like even here, like if there was no minus 6, again, it would be the same thing. It would be approaching positive infinity on both sides. Uh, you know, I should have used Desmos before when I wanted to explain to you guys uh, how asymptotes work. But, um, anyway... Uh, let me just continue put the fries in the bag. Uh, question 13. Uh, if he wants to load any. Uh, minus 5 over x cubed. Uh, as x approaches 0, what happens? Okay. Obviously, guys, here, the vertical asymptote is x equals 0. Okay. At the uh, vertical asymptote, okay, at the vertical asymptote, always y approaches positive infinity. And y approaches negative infinity. Okay. <coughs> well, you can test it, come in. Like, if you wanted to test it, like, let's say, test a number before zero, like negative one, do negative five over negative one, you'll get positive infinity. Okay. And test a number after zero, like positive one, negative five over positive one, you'd get positive infinity. Uh, sorry, negative, 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 negative infinity. This is the easiest way, in my opinion. Don't memorize, oh, this is this, this is it. Just test it. Or test a number before your root before and after the root and check is it positive, is it negative. If they're both positive, then y will only approach positive infinity. If they're both negative, y will only approach negative infinity. You have to test it out yourself. Try out uh, the graph. At the end of the day, that's how math works. You have to use trial and error sometimes. Question 14. The y intercept of the function y. Y intercept is when x is equal to 0. It's the easiest thing to find. Two, you just substitute x as 0. 2 times 0 cubed minus 5 times 0 plus 4, you get 4. So that means, uh, you know, y is equal to this, right? So y is equal to 4 
when x is equal to 0. Always. The x-intercept is always 0, comma, something. Okay? Uh, sorry, the y-intercept. Like here, uh, I'll give you a better graph. Uh, let me put, you know, I'm actually going to start copying the graphs and putting them into this. 2x cubed minus 5x plus 4. Uh, 2x cubed uh, minus 5x plus 4. This is the graph. So when we say y-intercept, always the y-intercept, it's where we cross the y-axis. And that's when x is equal to 0. So over here, when x equals to 0, the graph cuts the y-axis at y equals 4. Okay? So this is the graph I just showed you. Okay, this is cubic. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so 0, comma 4. Huh? Y-intercept is always 0, comma something. X-intercept is always x, comma something. Uh, x, comma 0. Like, let me show you. X-intercept is always x, comma 0. Y-intercept is always 0, comma y. Okay. <coughs> Question 15. Uh, the x-intercept of the function is what? X-intercept, again, is when y is equal to 0. Right? So we equate this all to 0. 3x squared minus x cubed equals 0. How do you solve this? Take x squared out. You're going to get 3 minus x is equal to 0. So we got two solutions. x is equal to 0. x is equal to 3. Okay. So that means we have two x-intercepts. 0, 0. And uh, 0, uh, sorry, and 3, 0. Always for an x-intercept, y is equal to 0. Like over here, let me go 3x squared minus x cubed. No, 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 go back. Uh, 3x squared minus x cubed. Okay, over here, look at the x-intercepts. Where does it cross the x-axis? Over here at 0 and over here at 3. I'm just trying to show you because like when you can see the graph better, you can understand it, I think. And always at the x-intercept, y is equal to what? 0. Okay. Question 16. Consider the function. Okay. As we want to study the behavior. Okay. We're we're, whenever we say as x approaches infinity, that means we're testing the behavior. And always when you test the behavior, you always look at the highest power. The highest power is 4x. 3 or 2, obviously 3. So we test 4x cubed. As x approaches positive infinity, it's going to be positive infinity cubed. So what's it going to be? Positive infinity. So as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. How about negative infinity? It will be 4 times negative infinity cube, which is the same as negative infinity. So, as x approaches positive infinity, you get positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, you get negative infinity. Okay? Question 17. Uh, which of the following is true? You have 5x to the 4 minus 2x cube. Uh, again, we want to study the behavior, so we look at the highest power. So, let's test positive infinity. So, it's going to be positive infinity to the power of 4. Uh, so as sorry, as x I'm supposed to write as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches five uh, infinity to the power four. This is going to be just positive infinity. How about as x approaches negative infinity? It's going to be five times negative infinity to the power four. Again, here people who make mistakes just put negative infinity, but it's an even power. So what does this turn into? Positive infinity, okay, because an even power makes it always positive. So in both cases, it approaches positive infinity. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and good luck uh, in your final.